I actually got her to give me eight things that make me a good partner that I will share with you. The first one is... And welcome back to another episode. It's been a few weeks because I've been gigging, or singular gig, um, playing a festival. So last night, played. Uh, Kimmer and I played a festival together. So as you may know, my wife Kimma is a music artist, and uh, she um, kindly has asked me to be her drummer. So we've been gigging over summer. This is the third or fourth gig that I've played with her. Um, went really, really well. I think it was the best gig from my perspective, which is great. And um, yeah, it's always good to put in a good shift because being behind the kit and being like, if you're a strong musician um, and you play through the set well, then you can kind of like give confidence to the, the front person. Um, now, I've, of course, Kimma doesn't need the extra support because she's completely finding solo stuff. Um, but it's good to be be there in addition to her confidence, like backing up that she can trust uh, that things are going to go well and she can trust that if things go wrong, well, that's fine because I'm there to support to some degree. Um, and I think what well, one thing that's um, a little bit more intricate with this one is I'm running the whole set uh, with tracks, um, which means that there's some complications in whether or not your laptop fails or breaks. But it went without a hitch, which is great. Um, and we had a better flow because I actually had the tracks all in one um, one Ableton file rather than individual Ableton files because I didn't have time to put it all into one track, but now I did. So it's all in one track. So even the um, transitions between songs are automated um, because I've just lined them up with the correct spacing between. So yeah, gig went really well. Last gig is up in not uh, not Nottingham, Newcastle uh, in a few weeks' time. So if you're interested in seeing, I can't remember if we've booked with a band or not, um, but nonetheless, Kimma will be there. So if you're interested in going to see Kimma and you're up in Newcastle, uh, then go to kimmaotung.com slash tour, I think it is. Today, I wanted to speak about um, how to be a good partner to somebody ambitious, um, because I believe that I am a good partner to somebody ambitious because she told me so, um, aka Kimma. And I actually got her to give me eight things that make me a good partner that I will share with you and I will riff off them a little bit. So the first one is bragging about her and shouting about her in every room. Um, I think this is incredibly easy because Kimmer is multi-talented, AKA I'm doing it now. Um, so I've always thought Kimmer is excellent at anything and everything that she does. And I've always been proud of her and it comes with absolute ease. Now, that makes it an enjoyable job because um, I know the intricacies, the, the kind of the important things. So for example, she produces a bunch of her own stuff. That's absolutely like super rare to find somebody that not only writes the songs, um, comes up with the melodies, makes the uh, comes up with the lyrics and so forth, also produces it, is a rarity. Then um, when it comes to performing, she has, creatively directed her own show with all the links, the narrative, the kind of the, the dynamic nature of the set. Um, so I'm like in awe and like amazed of that. And I guess to some degree, she's an extension of all my good parts. So I, I would say I'm a confident person, but she's like even more confident than I am. And I aspire to that. And I think thankfully my aspirations or like through her or like, um, that I see in her is not like jealousy orientated because like if she's great, then that looks good for me too. Like we, and if I'm great, then that looks good for her. So we both benefit from furthering each other's kind of like careers or purposes um, because it kind of like we benefit as a byproduct uh, from that to some degree. Um, another thing I found was in kind of like bragging about somebody, um, you could just like come up with stories. So you may know if you're in the UK, uh, there's something called Love Island. There, there are now international versions of that. But um, Kimma got one of her tracks synced to Love Island. Sync is getting a track played on TV or film or in social or uh, computer games and so forth. And she got her track played on Love Island, which is a, a massive uh, achievement from like the UK scene, because I would say Love Island is where the 
kind of like the modern music of today is used. Um, so getting that played was, was really cool. Now, I think at some point I might have been saying that story to a friend and that friend was like, oh, I know a person that works at a record label. Um, and I was like, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, I would love to get introduced. So in just me telling stories, um, it leads to like secondary kind of like interactions, which then led to um, that conversation uh, leading to Kimmer getting signed with Warner on the publishing side. Um, so you never know what kind of like story you're telling about them or what kind of like, you know, little like win or something like inter like interesting. Um, in sharing that in a particular room, you never know who that who you're sharing it with, who that person then knows, who that person then knows, and the connection that led to a thing of Kim getting signed uh, on the publishing side, purely because I just told a story about Kim's music on Love Island or or something like that, or like yeah, my wife's a music artist, she happened to get a music on Love Island. So it's just like tell people's stories, and it doesn't need to be like braggy, it doesn't need to be like name droppy, um, it can be like light hearted and, and fun. Um, number two, helping me with strategies because we're both on the ambitious journey um, and I have incredible insights. That's very kind of her. So I think when it comes to strategies, I guess guys have a disposition for like solving problems. Um, so not only is that like a positive thing, like wanting to solve problems and, and help being helpful to your partner. Uh, I think it helps that I'm outside of some of the conversations and some of the relationships, which means I can basically sometimes quite brash or quite like logically say what makes sense um, outside of a situation. Now, I don't mean that that's like um, with zero emotion. I mean that it's kind of like it has the nuance of, okay, outside of the, the intensity of the moment, there's like clarity. So it doesn't mean that it's without emotion because I think everything is still like you know, gut feelings and the emotion behind doing something over something else. But um, yeah, I, I would say like have a bunch of conversations about like the next steps or like particular hard conversations or relationship conversations. You know, it might be around negotiation. It might be around like strategically how you're going to go from A to B. So there was randomly like a freeze, a freeze of all the signings for Warner. And I was like, well, maybe it's a case of like, you know, X, Y, Z. Now I can't exactly remember the detail of all the conversations, but we will have negotiated and chatted about um, between each other how to do that. Now it's not that I have all the ideas, so it'd be a case of like spitballing and kind of like going backwards and forwards. I'm pro Kemma and she's obviously pro herself. So like collectively we can come up with a, like a, a good way forward. And I think some of that is like, when somebody's trying to like strong arm you or like manipulate you, it's about like never making decisions in the moment, always like coming back and always having that like external person that you can rely on or go back to, to, to say, well, like, this is really interesting information. Like I'll have to go back and discuss it with my team. Like the team doesn't even need to exist. It can be just literally your husband or your partner or your wife or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, just having that like third person or like the third party, it means that they can't actually, they're not trying to convince you, they're trying to convince somebody that they can't get to. So I've always found that that's a good thing when you're like being hired for a job or you're wanting uh, some sort of like, um, you're being offered a promotion or a pay rise or something. And if it's not quite to your liking, then kind of like being more of that hard sell is like a good way to do it. So yeah, I think because I am in like, for myself ambitious, it definitely helps and it makes it easy to then kind of feed some of that energy into her ambition because she is like by default ambitious. And I think a lot of the time we both need just like 5% encouragement or 10% encouragement. So it's just giving that encouragement and insight. And I think I read something about like kids. Um, the best thing to do with kids is like, it, like pull out like an intricate thing that they specifically did. So if it's coming like with tidying a room or whatever, oh, I really like the fact that you put these crayons all together, like the blue crayons all together and the red crayons, like whatever it is, like bringing like a, a unique insight um, in the complement is really important, I think, um, to recognize the intricacy and the detail and the effort that somebody puts into it. So yeah, I think it's like strategizing, just have conversations, be interested. Um, it helps that I'm a musician. It helps that I would love 
to kind of like, if I wasn't doing what I was doing and if I was her, I would love this journey that she's on. So I kind of like, again, like really enjoy seeing her be amazing in what she does and how she does it. Um, and I think it'd be really cool for anybody to be in that position. So yeah, helping that person further that stuff is, is great. Um, number three, um, I show up, I go to the shows, I carry stuff, I do what I need. Uh, I do what's needed to be done um, in any way to support me. So I think I'm a massive team player. Um, and why not like be a team player in something that kind of like the investment is, uh, will kind of like come back in, in kind of like twofold, fourfold, tenfold. Um, all my energy and all my investment goes into her and we as a family unit benefit from that. So I don't do it in a selfish way to get something. It's more so like I would do it because I would want that done for me uh, to some degree as well. Like I treat others how I would like to be treated. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, that kind of principled approach and also the principled, principled approach of like doing everything um, to like a real high standard. Um, and I think I'm used to like carrying drum kits and stuff for myself and I know what it's like when I get help and I know what it's like when I don't get help. I will never turn down help like somebody carrying a drum kit because it means it's quicker, it means it's shorter, uh, it takes less time. So I always try and do that stuff. Also, if it's a bit stressful, you'd want somebody to take care of all the things that I kind of like don't need to think about because I want to focus on one thing. So if it's Kemo, I know that she'll want to focus on maybe like rehearsing the songs or the sets. So she doesn't really need to want to be worried about like, how is she going to plug in her in-ears and, and so forth or running the tracks. So I try and, if I'm not drumming, I try and take care of some of those extra admin tasks. So then she can just focus on being her and being like grounded and centered and excited for the moment rather than like, not necessarily stressed, but like uh, busy with additional tasks. Number four, I get feedback, always insanely encouraging, uh, but also constructive feedback that helps them grow. I think, again, I'm very much treating her in the way that I like to be treated. So I don't particularly like negative feedback. Um, and I much prefer the kind of the constructive part. So just recognizing the effort and energy because it takes a lot of effort and energy to operate at a high standard uh, consistently. So if you can add to that, it's better. And ultimately, most of these things are opinions. So it'll be an opinion that I think, oh, there should be, you know, symbols at this part. And there'll be a, a hundred other people that think completely different points. So really my opinion doesn't matter unless it's something actually like categorically wrong. So for example, if something was out of time, that could be um, like said in a, like a distinct kind of like critical, like, Hey, this is out of time. It just needs to be corrected. It's, it's not a, a a big deal and, it, and it's kind of like a non-negotiable it makes sense but if it was like oh you used like a particular synth um kind of like sound um over a sub bass sound or whatever all that is opinion and ultimately again you don't want a sense of friction because it requires so much energy to produce a large volume of work so i always try and say stuff that like matters um that doesn't take away the energy and the momentum from any project that she's working on um, so yeah, just recognize it takes a lot of effort. And if I was in that position, I've just spent all this time to have somebody at the last moment to say, oh, like you should change the lyrics or whatever. It's just not logical to come in with certain feedback at certain points. So you're telling me that I have to go back and change this stuff. So I think one realizing like giving feedback that you could probably do is like important rather than giving feedback that it's just another to-do list, another to-do item. Um, to some degree. So I think recognizing that, always focusing on keeping your partner's like momentum and energy and positivity up, because it takes a lot of time. It's so much easier to sit on the sofa and watch Netflix, so much easier than chasing like, or fulfilling your purpose. Um, so just be mindful of that, feed into the positive energy. Um, just recognize if you were in this position, would you want somebody to say like, hey, this is off. Um, and then like, you then spend three hours trying to find a better sound then you go back to them. Ultimately it's an opinion. So basically recognize to, to ask um, the right kind of questions as well. Just be like, 
is anything out of tune is anything out of time like you don't need to know whether or not you know it's mixed correctly or whatever because sometimes it depends on where they are in the process as well with i'm specifically talking about tracks right so a track usually you put all the instruments in the right place and then after the fact it'll get mixed and mastered which will change the way that it kind of like collectively sounds in unison so it might be that you can't really comment on things sounding in unison to begin with um it'll be later on that that gets ironed out so just kind of like ask a question like what's going to be most helpful here and now i think sometimes i try and do that i don't always remember to do that um but yeah so like ask what are the expectations of the feedback always remember that you want to keep positivity and motivation and realize that your opinion is an opinion there'll be 500 people who will have different opinions so it's not always worth sharing yours it's, it's more so important to instill confidence in her opinion and in her gut um, and going with that because she's the one that will have to do the changes she's the one that has to move forward with it you're not doing anything so you know just remember like the the, the amount of effort that will kind of like come with sharing an opinion sharing a thing that needs to change um number five <clears throat> i believe in her wholeheartedly um and i'm the one that always says don't give up and keep going and i financially support her dreams too so yeah i've been massively blessed we are both highly favored and being able to support her financially is is great but she also makes money through music so that's fine and that's going to grow over time so i think it's a case of like exchanging when somebody's strong you kind of like take more of the responsibility while somebody else is kind of like preparing for their kind of like overtake of, of you and you kind of like take it in terms like an actual like team uh, to some degree like as well there's no pressure in what i do because i'm doing what i love so it comes with ease so i think really you want to have the conversation about like what's what comes with ease, what's easy to do. So for example, if she feels pressure that, oh, okay, I want to contribute more, I'd be like, well, this is easy for me. So don't worry about that. Focus on like continuing to make music, like the money will follow like, after that. Um, so yeah, I think it's always about trying to find like what works for you. Um, what What's kind of like, what are your skill sets and, and what works well for you? So yeah, I think with the whole like, don't give up, I want somebody else to tell me don't give up because this stuff is difficult. It'd be so much easier not to do any of this, not to fulfill any dream, not to fulfill any purpose and just be like, well, I could have, if I wanted to try and kind of like be somehow inspired with the fact that if I did it, then I would have been excellent at it. But like, I'm too cool to, to try like, you know that would be the only alternative mindset that you would be able to kind of like be content with i guess um but yeah i i love supporting her i think she is amazing i think she is talented and really it all comes down to like there are billions of talented people but the people that like win like truly win are the people that keep going like because talent only goes so far you need to craft that you need to kind of like it, talent is like an organic organism you need to invest more time i would say i'm a talented drummer but if i never drummed like i would never get better and also that talent would go to waste it reminds me of like there's a story in the bible a, a parable which is essentially just a, a story uh, that jesus says about um individuals burying like an investment that they've been given to double or like multiply um and how annoyed the person is when um, they find out the person that they gave an investment to buried it. Like it's not going to multiply if you bury it. So what's really inspiring is Kimma is always multiplying her talents and working on them and growing them. Like a couple of years back, she wouldn't have been producing her whole tracks. Um, so I love the fact that she's built confidence in her own ability, in her own gut, in her own like musical sense. It is very good. She writes incredible songs. She has incredible lyrics um, and they'll only get better uh, with that as well. Um, so yeah, like just like invest, invest in your partner. Like it makes absolute sense. Um, number six, uh, I'm a listening ear at all times. So basically number six is where um, I would say that, yeah, having conversations and chatting and stuff is like really, really helpful. 
and um, I, I would say yes, please. Yeah, um, I, I would say like be interested. Um, you don't always have to come up with the solutions or the support. Um, just recognize what's going to be helpful in that moment, and if you don't know, just ask. Um, number seven. Oh, my laptop's turned off. Number seven. Hopefully, that's not shut off the recording. No, it's still going. Hopefully, this is not going out of sync either. So, number seven. Uh, I'm honest, uh, but I say things gently. Uh, she really appreciates the honesty. I think, again, I don't show love through correction. You might have experienced love through correction. That does not work for me. It might work for you. It does not work for me. So I give exactly what I want to get. So it's always about, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy. There is... Um, a ton of people with imposter syndrome, like even, um, who's that acoustic guitar guy that plays with loop pedals? No, it wasn't even him. It's the guy, the, oh, what's his name? Yeah, it is Ed Sheeran, but it wasn't Ed Sheeran. It was somebody else. What's his name? The Scottish guy. What's his name? So I'm asking Kimmer. Anyway, the Scottish, Louis Capaldi, yeah. I was going to say Paolo Lutini, but no, that's it. <laughs> Louis Capaldi. It's because this is like Italian sounding like yeah. Lutini. Uh, Paolo Lutini. No, Louis Capaldi. <laughs> Louis Capaldi experiences um, imposter syndrome, and he's like a big deal, right? He actually said in his documentary that he had a default kind of like um, false belief that when he walked into a room, he thought that everybody hated him. I'm like, man, it takes a lot of energy to counteract those negative thoughts. So, yeah, I, I would say, like, with all this stuff, if you're going to be honest about something, um, remember that it's literally an opinion. Um, but I, I try and be, like, honest if there's something that's, like, wrong in a kind of, like, very logical, like, it, it makes sense and there's, like, a better iteration. Um, and it doesn't need to be, you know, you don't need to come in hard. You don't need to crush the individual. Um, it's just remembering that you basically have like a flower in your hand. Like what's the point of crushing it? It's not going to grow. So it's just being like gentle, like gentle, um, affirming, uh, that always produces better fruit. Uh, I, I think so. Yeah. I can't think of anything else specifically that I've been honest with. I, I guess, I guess as well, like confronting, like when you, because you're outside of the situation, you can see sometimes when things are, uh, like certain things are holding them back. So for example, like, saying no to something or uh, pulling out of something sometimes for the optics or for like your yes be yes all that stuff we can get crushed by um kind of like committing to something when we know that it's not right so sometimes i'll come in with honesty to be like hey we know this this is not right and it'd be better not to do it and i think that that would be like honored because you're being true to yourself and true to your gut rather than steamrolling yourself um and doing something that's not quite right so I guess sometimes coming in with honesty, be like, yeah, we don't need to do this. Even though it looks right, is the whole like Ruby in Aladdin when they're in the cave trying to find the genie. The, um, I think his name's Abu or, uh, yeah, I think the monkey's name Abu gets distracted by rubies. Great, rubies are treasures too. If they came out of the cave with a ruby, they'd be happy, right? But they didn't go into the cave for the ruby. They went into the cave for the genie, the lamp. So like just remembering that. Um, I think final one, number eight, um, I'm always looking out for opportunities and ideas. Um, yes. I think, again, I have a creative mind and I have like an ideas mind, so I love ideas. And I'm always kind of trying to find ways to use Kim's music in something or whether or not she has a gig or whether or not she talks or does a talk somewhere. Um, I'm always kind of like looking out for opportunities to further her gifts and talents and kind of invest in, in those um and multiply and help her multiply those things um, because she does exactly the same back to me. So even though these are like eight things I've said that she's written up about me, I would say that she does these back to me, um, which is why we work so well as a team. Um, so yeah, I would say that um, there are probably a bunch more, but yeah, recap to just quickly recap. It's like bragging about your partner and literally talking about them in every room, having those stories helping them strategize, so like talk with them about stuff um, and kind of like bring insights because you're outside of their situation so you can probably see some additional things. Just show up, like showing up. You don't need to 
have the skills all the time. You don't need to know everything. Just being there um, is really helpful. Um, and just be there to support and ask, like, how can I support you in this situation? Give feedback that's always like constructive and encouraging. Remember, it takes a lot of energy to do these things, to be out in the front, to be a pioneer. Um, so like always add positively to that. Number five, um, believe in your partner wholeheartedly. Um, encourage them not to give up. In you doing that, they'll do the same back to you. Um, number six, always be a good listening ear. So listening doesn't mean giving advice all the time. Sometimes it's just hearing them out. A lot of the time you, you find that you yourself come up with your own solutions if you just heard. Same for your partner. If they just heard, they'll come up with their own solutions. Number seven, uh, being honest, but be gentle in that. Um, I think that's really important. Um, but yeah, just calling out things that need to be called out in a soft, gentle way, being mindful of like the intensity of a situation and the energy it requires to get there. Um, and then number eight, always be looking out for opportunities. Just remember you're a team. So if, if Kimmer wins, you're winning. Um, if your partner wins, you're winning. Uh, if you win, your partner wins. And just see that um, absolutely as like these things are the way to make the, the team a better team, uh, to have a well-oiled machine, as it were. So hopefully that's insightful. I thought just to caveat a little bit as well on the, on the end of this, I, I have delayed this a little bit because one, I wanted to get the gig out of the way and two, I wanted to do this right and do this in a kind of like YouTube way of building up anticipation that you hold all the way through to the video to find out the eighth point. Um, and I wanted to do it correct. However, that was like delaying me and actually recording it. So funnily enough, I had a chat with Kim and she was like, you should just record a rough version. You could also, you could always do a next iteration, like a better produced version of it later on. Um, so just get your ideas down. Um, and again, like, Exhibit A, she's fulfilling these kind of like how to be a good partner, just chatting about somebody, finding the easiest iteration for that person, because ultimately I've I hit the stumbling block of like, I'm not doing the video or not doing any videos because in the last video, I promised that this is going to be the next video. So I can't do another video. So like I get stuck in my own head. So having somebody just to pull you out of your own head to give perspective. And there's two ways of giving perspective. If the person's like too focused on the details, you give like big picture advice or um, perspective. And if somebody's focused too much on the big picture and overwhelmed by that, you give them the detail, just like, okay, so what are you going to just do next? Like not, don't worry about the big picture and the, like the big goals, just what are you going to do next? So flip between that, just recognize what, what's your partner concerned about. They're concerned about the big picture or the little picture, um, or the detail I should say. And if so, just give them the reverse and that usually helps. Um, yeah, hopefully this has been good. And I'll probably do a second iteration of this in the future and add more points to it as well. And until next time, I'll speak to you later. Uh, keep shining like a bright. I, I need to come up with a, a, a right tag. I've not come up with the exact right tag, um, but I'll talk to you later. Bye for now. Yeah.